Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's video. Today we'll be talking about short put options versus long call options and we'll be looking at the difference between going short on a put option, meaning selling a put option, versus going long on a call option, meaning buying a call option. This is going to be an introductory video as part of a series aimed at helping you understand some of the basics and foundational terminology you'll need to know as you get comfortable learning about, talking about, and eventually trading options strategies. We'll be looking at the difference between buying, also known as going long, and selling, also known as going short, as well as the difference between call options and put options. So I have the SPY. ETF pulled up in Thinkorswim. This is the one year one day chart as well as some indicators down here. What we're going to be doing right away is going into the trade tab. I did want to point out a couple basic things about the options chain before we actually go into selling versus buying. So for today's example, we're going to be pulling up the seven day to expiration SPY option chain for January 2nd, 2024. So a couple things about the option chain. For Thinkorswim, you're going to see calls on the left and you're going to see puts on the right. In most trading platforms or options, this is going to be similar. Uh, this is the general user experience, but you can always customize things. Um, in my screen here for this option chain, I have a couple different columns. Um, I'm showing all strikes. The expiration date is in the middle, strike is in the middle, but I have open interest, the delta, bid, and ask going from left to right in calls and right to left on puts. As far as options trading goes, volume is something that's going to be important to look at. Um, so for open interest, you're going to see numbers here ranging from zeros to in the thousands. So what this is telling you is at any one time uh, for the January 2nd 475 call option, there are 3,581 contracts open at this very time. So that's important because you want to have liquidity in your options trading. Think about if you're buying and you want to get out of a contract by selling, it's going to be a lot easier to do that in the options that are trading in the thousands versus the options that have open interest in the zeros because no one's interested in those options contracts. The delta column, that's going to be telling you at any given time here what the probability is of that options contract expiring in the money so if you're going to be buying an options contract you want it to expire in the money if you're going to be selling an options contract you are going to want it to expire out of the money so you can see these ones are out of the money right now um, in the dark shaded in the purple shaded these are currently in the money so just to point out one example here, if I were to be looking at the 29 Delta, this is 479 strikes January 2nd. Right now, there is a 70% chance these will expire out of the money and a 30% chance they will expire in the money. If you're looking at some of the currently in the money options, uh, looking at the 468, there is an 82% chance this will continue to be in the money um, at expiration date January 2nd. Conversely, an 18% chance this will fall out of the money before uh, the January 2nd expiration date. Bid and ask. Um, if you're clicking on an ask, that is going to bring up a single buy contract. And if you're looking at the bid, clicking on that, bid is equated to selling that options contract. And the difference between the bid, the bid price and the ask price is sometimes called the bid ask spread. We want to be looking at options with a tight bid ask spread so that we're not giving up any of that value back to the market. Let's look at two trades that have similar biases on the market, which in this case would be a 
bullish bias, but have two different executions and two different risk profiles. We're going to look today at selling a put option or going short on a put option or a short put or going long and buying a call option. So for this situation, we're going to look at two options contracts, one on the put side, one on the call side that have uh, a, the same or very close delta, which makes them comparable by risk profile. So I already have these pointed out here, 30 delta on either side. This is going to help us do two comparable trades. Let's look first at buying a call. Again, ask is going to be where you would select for buying an option. Hit confirm and send and then looks, let's look at the risk profile here in the following slide. But just numbers here, your max loss is going to be the premium that you're paying to open this contract and your max profit if SPY aligns with your bearish or sorry your bullish outlook and goes through the roof it's an infinite profit on this one so let's look at the risk profile here on the analyze tab think or swim so this is a January an options contract with the expiration of January 2nd so we're going to need to set the date up top to January 3rd, which would be the morning after that last full day, the options contract is in play. Uh, we're also going to make sure that our break even is January 3rd. So this line, this price slice represents the break even point for this trade. So your Y axis, you're going to see that is your risk profile here. That is your break even. Um, all the way up to many thousands and down to me negative many thousands here. This teal line is going to be from left to right on the x-axis. Your, your profit and loss, it's graphed out here. On the x-axis, your strike price is laid out going down almost to zero, sitting at around mid to high 400s where it is now. So... You can look, $121 is the maximum risk. That's a limit on the downside. The upside on this trade, if SP, SPY goes through the roof, you could make tons and tons of money and never have to trade again. Very unlikely that's going to happen, but it is an unlimited upside. So let's keep this trade in the Analyze tab and, and go back to the options chain. So we're going to look at, in this situation, selling a 30 delta put option with a 472 strike price. Let's see what that would look like. So not max loss is an infinite, but it's, it's well up there. Um, your max profit is going to be as the seller of the option. Think of yourself as the insurance agency collecting a premium. But what you do there is you're also opening yourself up to, well, it's very unlikely, a very, very, very high loss. Let's analyze this trade here. So, you know, you're looking at these two trades, it's a, it's almost, you know, the inverse, uh, there is on one side of the trade, a capped upside here, $114. And there is an unlimited downside here. This is selling uh, selling a put option, same bias, uh, different execution, and then buying a call option, capped downside, unlimited upside. So again, many of, you know, many option sellers, especially in the beginning, you know, this is going to be your max loss here. Many Brokerage won't allow you to do this. So instead of selling a naked put, they call this, with unlimited downside, you can sell what's called a cash secured put or a covered call on the opposite side of that with a different bias. We actually get to this to these um, strategies in the videos linked below as you start to understand the basics of shorting options or going long on options, selling versus buying and call and calls versus puts 
you can start to roll these strategies together and paired with longer term holdings, um, you can have a longer term plan that's a, a, cyclic, a cyclical plan that will bring you um, some extra profits if the market stays where it's at or doesn't move much. Uh, please, after you watch these videos a few times, check out the ones in the link below.